Hello? Wow, <laughs> that was loud. Hello everyone and welcome to the Museum of World Culture here in Gothenburg and welcome to the third symposium in the series Anatomizing the Museum, which this time focuses on contemporary art and the decolonization of museums. Do I sound really strange? Okay, good. So my name is Georgiana Sakia, and I've been working with research development at Baland Academy since March this year. And one of the things that I get to do as part of this role is to connect research and expertise at Baland Academy with a broader field of art and broader society in Sweden and internationally. So this symposium is a typical example of what I do, where Baland Academy and the Swedish Exhibition Agency get together Uh, and collaborate around a theme of, or an issue of certain urgency in the art field and beyond. And just to give you an example of this urgency that I'm talking about, of this theme of the symposium, I'm sure that the Swedish-speaking public has not missed the still ongoing debate on museums and their role in contemporary society, which has been going on in the media this autumn, here in Sweden, and where the Museum of World Culture, where we are today, has attracted a lot of attention, among other things, for attempting to put at the center of their work a um, more critical perspective, and because, as their critics see it, the activity of the museum is too politicized. As if museums have not always been politicized, perhaps um, the more interesting question here is in what way they are politicized, rather than if. And I'm looking forward to some productive discussions on that during these two days. The series of Symposia Anatomizing the Museum was initiated by my colleague, Jason E. Bowman, uh, at Valland Academy. And he's here, and you'll see more of him tomorrow, when he will moderate the part on curation of the symposium. The first two symposia, which took place at Valland in November 2015 and April this year, um, had a theme, Contemporary Art and Museum Collections, and they were more particularly focusing on the effects of interventions in museum collections by contemporary artists. And Alisa Grossman will say a few more words about that in a minute, but just in case you're interested, you can find uh, the recordings of the previous symposia on the website of Holland Academy. So this third symposium is, as I was saying, a collaboration between Holland Academy and the Swedish Exhibition Agency, and in just a minute, Matthias Strober, who is senior curator there, uh, will speak more about the agency's role and how they were thinking when they entered into the collaboration with Valland. Uh, and those who have put together the program of this edition are, apart from myself and Matthias Strober, um, Alisa Grossman and Jason E. Bowman, who are both working in the Fine Arts Department at Valland Academy. And I want to make sure that you all have got a copy of the program this program, uh, where you'll find out details of what will happen these two days, uh, and also presentations of uh, the speakers, abstracts, and, and so on. Uh, one practical thing that we need to have sorted out by the end of today is who will participate in which case studies. Uh, as I'm sure everyone knows by now, we have two parallel sessions tomorrow, so you can choose two case studies that you can participate in. If you haven't chosen one already, uh, you can still, or two already, you can still do that with Annika over there. Where's Annika? Maybe she's still upstairs. Um, so you can do that with her, pick up your case studies. Um, and before I leave the floor to Matthias, I want to say that this symposium would not have been possible without the great work of a lot of people, but I'll just mention a few. Shelka Minyan, Cora Hillebrand, Kjantjan Buratoki, Stefan Jensen, Annika Gironhagen, Matthias Persson, and Stefan Sederborg, who have done fantastic work and who will continue to help throughout these two days. So once again, most welcome, and thank you, Matthias. Thank you, Georgiana. Hello. Nice to see you all. My name is, as Georgiana said, Matthias, Matthias Strömer, and I work as the senior curator for the Swedish Exhibition Agency for Riksutställningar in Swedish. Um, 
I write, curate each about exhibitions, and especially, and especially when I have the opportunity to choose on my own between the meetings of contemporary art and other aspects of our cultural world, uh, child culture and cultural historical institutions like museums. So this is pretty much up my alley, but not when it comes to the topic, and more about that in a little while. Uh, my organization has the mission to develop the exhibition media. Uh, we do it in a quite broad range of activities, from publications, consultations, exhibitions, experiments, and like this, seminars and symposia, more or less always in collaborations. We have in the core of our activities a desire to help and also develop museums in its important task to be relevant, to be challenged, to have a voice, and to also listen carefully to its surrounding world, both present and historical. So many, if not most, museums are these days in a state of change of many different reasons, and some have more or less always been. Uh, I would like to stress three different objectives that these days are much debated and also subjects for change. Identity, first and foremost, identity. What is a museum and what is it for? What is this or that specific museum's identity? Activities is of course also changing. What is said and why? from where and to whom, and the role in our society also. Where does the museum's borders end, and how active can a museum be? So, it is our belief, not just mine, our whole organization's belief that artists can be perfect agents for change, uh, present and historical. We have lots of examples of that. And that art and artistic methods can also be very valuable in understanding one's activities and the role in our society. So that's one important reason for us to co-organize this symposium together with Academy Valhalla. Another reason is, of course, the topic in its own: decolonial, decolonialize, decolonization of museums. Big word, important word, well heard word. What does it mean, and especially what does it mean for our museums, their role in our society, for their activities, and also for their identity? During these days, there will surely be some answers, I hope. I guess also more questions, and I hope above all lots of discussions, meetings, talk. Because really, this theme we will discuss didn't really start today, nor will it end. Tomorrow, this is an ongoing thing, so let's keep doing it. Uh, our cultural institutions, and yes, of course, museums are there, are partners in a lifelong learning with series of lots of maybe, how about this, I propose, what do you think? So, having said that, and standing in front of all of you, uh, looking forward to a fantastic lineup of smart, thoughtful thinkers, writers, curators and scientists, uh, I'm very happy to share this space with you and would end this short introduction by saying please do not miss the opportunity to also enjoy this splendid museum and I especially recommend uh, the exhibition of Eleven Theme together. Thank you! Um, and just to give you a little bit of context, um, part of the curriculum for the first year MFA students at Valin includes the assignment of conducting an investigative or interventionist project within a specific site or institutional context. So for example, one year they contributed to an archaeological dig that was going on in a certain part of Gothenburg. Um, another year they worked within a schoolhouse in a depopulated Swedish town. Last year, they made an intervention into the Medical History Museum here in Gothenburg. Um, and this coming spring, there'll be um, interventions made by this year's group of students uh, at Gothenburg's Maritime Museum and Aquarium, which they've already started planning and discussing this semester. 
Um, and these projects have been supported by EU regional and city funding, as well as the Center for Critical Heritage Studies platform here at the University of Gothenburg and the Affiliated Heritage Academy. Um, and these assignments of working within and intervening into such a wide range of institutional contexts have come to play a really central role in asking the questions and asking the students here at Barland to engage in questions around critical curating and quasi-curatorial methods, as well as the overlaps and boundaries between concepts of art criticality and heritage criticality. So these anatomizing museum seminars that we've been having are then also fundamentally connected to the work that goes on by these students in our immediate surroundings. So these seminars have really become key spaces where theory can meet practice um, and lead to something with a real impact, both in terms of artistic practice, but also in the ways in which we engage with and challenge the museum institutions around us. Um, so last November, there was this anatomizing the Museum One Contemporary Art and Museum Collections, which was also supported by the Center for Critical Heritage Studies here at the University of Gothenburg. Um, and that first sem uh, seminar brought together artists, researchers, curators, and museum professionals to explore the general impacts and implications of artistic interventions within museums. And then another Mizen Museum Two Contemporary Art and Museum Intervention was held in April this year. Um, and that looked further into the effects of artistic interventions and how they can serve to reimagine and repurpose museums and their collections. And then now with Anatomizing Museum 3, we have this specific focus on how artistic practices can contribute to this larger project of decolonization. Um, and we're also inviting discussions and debates around the particular tensions and possibilities that can arise when artists engage in decolonizing dialogues within the context of non-art museums. Um, and we want to look at, we want to examine the place of artists, not just within these museums, but also in the development um, and elaboration of theories and activities around the practices of decolonization. Um, so it's important here for us to begin to point to and clarify issues such as the differences between post-colonial and decolonial practices and ideas, and this is something that we're going to try and address from the start of the presentations today. Um, we're also trying to draw on discussions around decolonization that are going on at a more global level and then kickstart a dialogue about how these can apply to some situations going on here in Scandinavia, where for a long time there's been a kind of widespread denial that anything even related to colonization could apply here at all. Um, so in terms of this, now just to go over the kind of structure of the panels, um, we decided to organize the panels into categories that were inspired by a text that the anthropologist Paul Rabino wrote, called A Contemporary Museum, where he basically outlines the challenges of what he describes as, he calls reinventing a museum for the 21st century. So he, he says that in order to make today's museums fully contemporary, and he uses this word contemporary, there are three different registers of vision that need to be engaged with. And he says the first is assemblage, which basically relates to the ways in which objects, experiences, and insights work together to create new meanings um, and values and possibilities within the museum context. And assemblage theory is part of an emergent museological discourse that integrates perspectives both from art and the social sciences. It tries to account for pluralized relationships and agencies in museum collections and looks at museums as relational entities that can produce new configurations of power and space through kind of new forms of enactment. So, then, so that's assemblage. And then there's the register of curation, um, which also involves the process of assembling. Um, but it speaks to the opening up of multiple modes and possibilities of exhibition practices and tactics. So curation, according to Rabino, is the activity of turning objects into artifacts and then artifacts into terms. And he said curation is also the logic that directs this transformation when objects are taken out of their previous settings and then reconfigured in both spatial and also narrative terms. And then we have the third register of vision that Ravno suggests, which is remediation, which relates to alternative forms and changes of medium within museum exhibitions and museological encounters, and ideally provokes viewers into a deeper awareness of previously taken for granted or unquestioned conventions. So there are the things in a museum collection, like objects, texts, photographs, 
which are preserved and circulated in certain ways, but then there's also things like labels, um, lists, and catalogs, which are also fundamentally part of this context. And all of these materials through, the con through this idea of remediation can be shifted, relabeled, and reconsidered over time. So we're interested in looking at the strategies and the effects of how somewhat more lateral investigations into these processes can reveal new readings, both of the politics of museums, but also the affective and subjective aspects of their contents. So that's just to give you a little bit of background in terms of how we organize the structure of the panels. So now I guess I will hand this over to those of you who are actually presenting your work here. So welcome again to all of you. I'm really happy you could be here and on behalf of all the organizers. Um, we're looking forward to all of the ideas and discussions that will be generated over the next few days. Thank you.